It's not a big secret that DWM is my favorite tiling window manager, and it has been that way for quite a long time, really. It's been probably close to two years since I installed DWM for the first time, and I remember when I first got it installed that I was really, really happy with my accomplishment. I thought I really accomplished something because DWM is this really hard window manager to install, and I succeeded. It was fantastic, and then... I installed Xmonad and realized DWM is way easier. <laughs> so uh, DWM is actually a fairly easy window manager to install if you know what you're doing. And it's not even that hard for if you don't know what you're doing. So the point is I've been using DWM now for quite a while and I know quite a lot about it. I've learned quite a bit of the configuration file and a lot of the source code. And I've, I've learned a lot of how to do things in it as you do when you use something for quite a long time but that doesn't mean that I know everything right I, I've always prided myself on learning new things and one of the things I learned least recently was that there's an easy way to switch themes quickly in DWM it's not really a new thing like if you know anything about DWM you know there's a way to include certain snippets of code from one file to another and you can do this in a lot of languages. Sometimes it's they use the word source, sometimes they use the word include, sometimes they use something different. But the point is, a lot of languages allow you to basically import contents of one file into another file. And basically, that's how you can do this. So let me go ahead and show you what I've done, because it's actually kind of neat. Okay, so here we are in Alacrity, and this is just my DWM configuration file. It's just basic. I've gone through and done a lot of patches and stuff like that. Everybody has seen my DWM setup time and time again. Every time I show you something on video, this is probably what you're seeing. So if you want to do this, there are several things you need to know. So first, remove your config.h file because we're going to be compiling DWM again after we make the change. So we'll remove that and then we're going to vim into our config.def.h file. And you can see right away mine looks different than most configuration files because Normally, in a DWM configuration file, after the DWM font line here, there are several variables that are called and defined that define colors that then are used in this section here to attribute them to certain parts of the window manager, whether it's the bar at the top, the, the, the border, whatever. You know, that's how it works. You declare the variables and then you use them later on in this part here. But I don't have that in this file at all. Instead, what I've done is taken that part out completely. Don't delete it. Copy it. And then I've gone through and included this line here. So hashtag include and then a file path to a particular theme that I want to use. So in this case, I'm using the Dracula theme. I haven't changed the wallpaper because I've already done this video once and it didn't work out. So forgive the wallpaper not matching. But the point is, if I want to change themes, all I have to do is change just one word to a particular theme that I have already created. So in this case, I can change to one dark. Okay, so I just write and quit this. And then before I compile DWM, what I'm going to do is show you what the theme files look like. So I can CD into my themes folder. And if I do an LS here, you'll see I have several themes that I've created over the last couple months or so. And I can use any one of those by just changing that one word in config.def.h and then recompiling. So let me show you what one dark looks like. So I'm going to vim into one dark.h and that's all it looks like. Now, like I said at the beginning, the include functionality, all that does is sources this file into my config.def.h file. It pulls all these values in as if they were there already. But it's just one line, so you only have to change that one word when you want to change something. Instead of having to go through and change each and every color code there, that you know, to change the colors. And all of the themes look exactly the same. The only thing that changes is the, the hex codes here. And I can show you that if, if uh, we can just go ahead and vim into Monokai. Looks the same. Vim into Dracula. Looks the same. And... That's the way with all of them. And it doesn't really matter how many colors you have defined as a variable. As long as every variable that you define, you also use later on in config.def.h. So if we CD back up a level 
and and vim into this here again every variable that you define in your theme folder has to be used here in one of these two areas or how many ever other areas that you use so there's a lot of different places that you can define colors and call for colors in dwm i just happen to have these two other patches necessi necessitate you have other places here but as long as you when you call those or when you define those variables you have to use them all here otherwise you'll get an error when you compile so that's the only thing you have to really look out for i happen to have an extra variable they're called col underscore gray five that isn't normal and a lot of people have more colors called than i do way more so that's really all there is to it all i've done is created a whole bunch of theme files like i showed you and then when i want to switch between one i go up here and change this one word and then I go out of here and do make, sudo make install, and then I enter my password. And then what I can do is reset D DWM. So I'm going to cut the video away from here because when I reset DWM, all my windows go to the first tag. Uh, I want to fix that before I go through and show you what it looks like. Okay, as you can now see, I have a one dark color scheme in every place except for SL status. Now. The thing is, SL status is also written in the same language DWM is, so you can do literally the same thing. So if we see, if we clear this, up a level, and then into SL status, and then remove config.h, oops, I actually have to finish typing that, and then we go into an ls here, we, what we can do is go into config.def.h, go here at the bottom, so this is the top, this is the bottom, and then change the exact same word. It's the exact same line, right? We just in a different file. So change this to one dark, save and quit. And then if I'm going to show you the theme file for the SL status, if I go into themes and vim into one dark, this is what it looks like. Now, basically, what I've done is the exact same thing, only it's different lines. Obviously, the way SL status does things is going to be different than DWM itself. And what we have taken is normally this part here would appear at the bottom of config.def.h. I've taken it out and put it in each of my theme files. And each theme file has different color codes. So in this case, this is the one dark color codes that associate to the icon and the text and all that stuff. So when I compile SL status and then restart it, it will call this particular theme file instead of the one I was using before. It's the exact same process as DWM, it just has different things in the theme, the theme file. I hope that makes sense. Uh, one last thing, make sure if, you, if you're going to do this and not use my theme files, make sure you get that semicolon there at the bottom. If, if you go down here at the bottom, there is a semicolon, make sure you copy that over as well, and that it's, it's in each of your theme, theme folders, be, or theme files, because if you don't, you'll get an error. Semicolons are important. That's the lesson you should learn. Okay, so if we get out of this, and then we see the up level, and do make, sudo make install, and then kill all SL status, you can now see SL status has come back with one dark coloring. And that is how you change themes really quick. Now, some of you probably are wondering what the purpose of this is, and why it's so cool, and why I'm so proud of it. Because, I mean, really, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, I'm sure those people who know how to code know how to do this stuff better. This would have been very simple for them. But it was a eureka moment for me. Even though I knew that you could include files and, and then kind of import them. I know that's not the right word. Into that particular, you know, a different file. I knew you could do that. I never associated that with being able to uh, manage multiple themes. And, you, and once I had that eureka moment, it was really cool. And... That's because prior to this discovery, the way I managed themes was messy. I mean, at one point I was uploading a different repository for like four different themes that I switched back and forth between all the time. I had, you know, Grubbox and Dracula and Purple and Ocean, and I was always rotating between them. And in order to do that, I'd have to delete my whole DWM file, pull down the new the, the theme that I wanted to change to recompile that way. It was a mess. It was also stupid because there was other, obviously other ways I could do, could have done it. At one point, I had all of my theme folders that are theme themed DWM config folders 
in a particular folder on my computer and then I would copy them over and then recompile and that was a mess as well. So you can see how this is way easier and I can't even begin to tell you how many themes, how many rices that I lost just by overwriting them because I just decided not to save them at all. So by doing it this way and creating, every time I decide to write something, I just create a new theme .h, you know, whatever I want to call it. Let's say I wanted to do a Nord. So I do Nord.h, put the in the theme folders for both DWM and in the SL status, theme it from there, go through and do the, all the color codes just like I would normally do a rice, and then change that one word in the config files and then recompile and I've changed the theme. And then when I want to switch back and forth, I have all the themes that I've ever created in that one directory and it's easy to just change that one word and recompile. That's why it's so cool. So if you want to do this yourself, you can either go through and do it as I have shown you, or you can just down download my Suckless Utils repository that's on GitLab. The link is in the video description. It has all of my themes right there for you to try if you want to try this out. You will have to put up obviously with my particular patches and such, you know, because it's my DWM file. So anyways, uh, that is it for uh, this video. If you have questions or need some help, you can leave those in the comment section below or hit me up on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gentoo is fun true. Patrick L, Primus, Sid A, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, Abdul, Steve A, Mitchell, Art Center, Amateus, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, the BSD, Ro These Rock, and Peter A. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you next time.